It looks easy and it turns out beautiful in the tutorial by the expert, but what's it like to actually do this method when you're still learning? We ask subscribers to this channel and to our newsletter to volunteer and test this hair drawing method out and the results were varied and fascinating. Hi, my name's Kenzo and this is Love Life Drawing. So Frank's method for drawing hair is straightforward. It's four easy steps, but we all know that things that look simple in tutorials aren't so simple in real life. The expert doesn't just know the technique, but also has all that muscle memory in their arm, that experience in their eyes. So after the tutorial, it all seems to make sense, and then you put pencil to paper, and then things can go pear-shaped pretty quickly. So this is the first time we asked viewers of this channel to test out one of our tutorials and we learn so much from it. This is the reality behind the tutorial, what it's really like to apply these four steps. Before we get into it, I just wanted to say how important learning to draw hair is. Hair is overlooked, artists usually focusing on facial features and things like that, but hair can absolutely make or break a drawing. Also, this method teaches you about bigger principles. One is to put down the big, simple shapes of light and dark before going to detail. That's a huge thing to learn. And another is that it's easier to start with mid-tone and move towards light and dark rather than going to very dark or light too quickly. And the last thing is, it's quite a good confidence builder sometimes, I think because you can try this and see an improvement quite rapidly. That's not the case with all techniques and all tutorials, but with this one, you can generally see an improvement quite rapidly, which is quite a nice boost to the confidence. Brenda is experienced with watercolor landscapes, but she's fairly new to figure drawing, and she hadn't seen the hair tutorial, so she, she was able to do a before and after video. And her before drawing is similar to how a lot of people approach hair. She'll put down a lot of strands. She does try to show the light reflecting off the hair with these areas left white. It's a good effort. It doesn't have as much volume as it could. So then she watched the tutorial and tried the steps. She did a great job. She put down the overall shape, filled it with a mid-tone, removed some for the light areas, added some for the darkest areas, and then finished with a layer of strands. And the results feel like a shiny head of hair with real volume. It's amazing how much she was able to improve on her first try. She said she had tried the method at a class and even received compliments from other artists on it. A few areas for improvement were that she had tried to put down the whole big complex shape of the hair rather than break it down into big but very simple shapes. She was also a little bit heavy handed with these stray strands away from the mass of the hair. These areas are very light and wispy. So a general principle would be to have the shape first and then hint at the strands. So that could have worked well. Notice in Frank's demonstration how he handles the sideburn. He uses a basic shape, removes some to show that the hair is thinner there, and then just hints subtly at a few of the strands. Just before we continue, I just wanted to let you guys know about the free guide we have at lovelifedrawing.com. It's called Life Drawing Success. Uh, and we also have a newsletter where every week we'll send out useful tips and extra information. So check those out if you haven't already. You can go sign up at lovelifedrawing.com slash lifedrawingsuccess. Pauline's started a distance learning course uh, with a figure drawing and portrait component to it. And she was really surprised how much she enjoyed that part of it and is getting more and more into it. Pauline was also able to do a before and after drawing. Her initial drawing looks like this, a good effort showing light and dark, but she goes to details a little early. She did Frank's method and did a good job following the steps. She did break down the big shape into simpler shapes, but this shape at the back of the hairs come forward to line up with this line, not giving space for her ear to be. I think we weren't clear enough when we just said, instead of one big shape, simplify into a few shapes. We should have emphasized that the relationship between the shapes, where they align, where the lines intersect with each other is also really important. Where do the lines flow into each other and that kind of thing. 
The other thing that happened for a few people was that Pauline added lights and darks to most of the shape, so not leaving much of the original mid-tone anywhere. Everywhere became either very dark or very light with a lot of contrast and harsh edges. Um, you know, the tones in hair are often subtler than that. She did a great job overall and she's even tried a few more times improving as she goes. Nicholas was able to do a before and after as well. The reference photo I sent him was more complicated, a more complex hairdo. I just wanted to see what would happen. So before viewing the tutorial, he already had the idea of looking for the light and dark shapes, that basic value structure, instead of seeing strands and just going to details like that early. He did a great job with Frank's method. Now he's using Vine Charcoal, before he was using Pierre Noir, Conti Pierre Noir and produced a lovely drawing despite the complexity of the hair. Some of the light areas got quite strong edges where maybe a softer contrast could have worked, but the light areas were really well chosen and simplified and the strands which were going in a lot of directions were done really well. It was a real transformation. So if you look at the before and after, it's not just the strands, the layer of strands that's different. I think the biggest difference is his Firstly, is selection for the shapes of the highlights. In the original, they were kind of overly complex and not really telling us about the volume or about the shape. In Frank's tutorial, he really brought out two highlight areas simplified that tell you about the overall shape, the big shape, the big volume, and that's what we really care about. Um, and that kind of idea of the highlight going across the line, the direction of the strands has helped a lot as well. So a real transformation here. Now Danny, Danny is a, a veteran and he now works in a technical job, but he's also full of creativity um, and he's not been drawing long, but he is really, really into it and he's progressed quite rapidly. Um, and he's recently had a boost of confidence. He was even able to take part in the recent Pages of the Sea event for Remembrance and drew a portrait of his friend in the sand to be washed away by the sea, which I think is amazing. Danny had seen the hair video already, so he didn't do a before drawing. This was his first go doing the technique, and he drew the photo of Mako from the tutorial. He followed the steps in the tutorial really well, first drawing the shape using some big simple shapes rather than trying to do the whole complicated outline in one go. He filled with a good flat mid-tone, removed some charcoal for the light areas, added the darks and then the strands. And the result looks good. One bit of feedback was again, like with, uh, with Brenda, was for the sideburn. It's got quite a lot of detail and contrast, but the sideburn is actually quite a light and wispy area. So instead, it might have been better to just put down the shape of it, smudge it a little bit to give that light feeling remove some of the shape to show that the hair is thinner there. And also overall, some of the angles have kind of moved clockwise a little bit. If you look at the highlights on the hair and the highlights in the drawing, the angles are a little bit off. Michael started drawing figures a few months ago. He's really gotten into it, which is brilliant to see. And he's made a lot of progress already. He'd seen the video, so he went straight into trying to apply Frank's method. His first attempt went really well. It has volume and it's boldly done. I gave him some feedback and interestingly, my feedback made things worse. Um, and I said in the feedback that he ought to break the shape up into big, simple shapes rather than trying to draw the whole complex outline right off the bat. But I didn't emphasize the importance of the relationships between the shapes. Um, and so the shape kind of turned out uh, a little bit difficult. I talked about thinner lines. I felt like you could do thinner lines for the strands and also softer shapes for those wispy bits rather than thick lines. And the main problem I think was that I didn't emphasize that most of the drawing, his original drawing was really successful. And the things that were already working were more important than the small improvements that I was talking about. So I think Michael then focused on the things that I was talking about distracting him from the things that were already working, which were more important. And I think that that's a good lesson generally, whether it's, you know, you're a student trying to figure things out or a teacher trying to give good feedback, you've got to recognize what's working and not just it's tempting to just focus on what needs to be improved. 
but when you don't recognize what's working, you can leave that behind sometimes. Fortunately, Michael is really dedicated and he had another go. He tried it digitally and he even had a go with a live model uh, with more complicated hair and lighting. And that's the kind of experimentation, taking the failures as learning experience, that's just the right way to approach your learning. And then last but not least, my wife Lucy, before uh, she watched the tutorial, had a go at drawing this hair. And then I showed her the tutorial and asked her to do the hair again. Um, and wow, it was a, another wonderful improvement. So these guys have done such a great job. I think um, I really wanna say thank you so much to all of them because they've really helped us out by showing us what can work, what can uh, go wrong with this method. And I think it just makes tutorials and this channel a lot more real and a lot more useful. Um, let me know what you guys thought about this approach of uh, having these guys show us how things really went and whether you enjoyed it. And uh, I would really recommend that you get some charcoal. I'll put up the reference photo where you can see it in this video. Try drawing the hair and see how it goes, see how it works for you, because I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Um, I'm pretty impressed with how it turned out actually. That's crazy. It's great. I think it um, I've looks got... 3D, right? Yeah, and it's. I've got a bit more confidence with charcoal, maybe as well, because. Well, know... that's one thing he said is that if you're just trying to get used to the material, just try drawing some hair for a while, because right. it really get you feeling good about it and more confident. Yeah, with the the shading and the light and stuff, it was really yeah. yeah. While you're here, why not check out another of our videos? Uh, we've got loads of cool stuff and subscribe because we've got loads of loads more cool stuff coming out over the next few months. Thank you guys for watching.